draw that they have ever done in the history of Express Entry, a massive draw of over 27,000 people to those who are in Canada in the Canadian Experience class. Let's talk about this. Unbelievable. This, as I said in my video that I did a little bit earlier today, it was surprise. I had my master class that I was going through. I wasn't able to continue the conversation, but we have got to unpackage this. We have got to talk about this. I've got to hear what you guys have to say, but every single person, I don't think there's one person that was in the pool that qualifies for Canadian experience class that is not going to receive an invitation to apply today. This is absolutely mind-blowing. I'm Mark Holthy. I'm the Express Entry Lawyer, and I'm going to talk to you guys today about what this means for you if you're in Canada, and just as importantly, what this means for you guys that are outside of Canada. Now, in my video that I did on Saturday of last week, I talked about what the future holds for 2021. You'll remember that I said that we were going to see the lowest scores for CEC that have ever been, basically ever been um, extended because the government was going to be looking at people in Canada as the primary source of immigrants throughout this year because of the travel restrictions. Because you outlanders are not able to travel right now. They've got this massive 401,000, and I'm going to post this so that you guys can see. They have this massive target of 401,000 immigrants this year. How in the world are you going to be able to do that unless you do something like this? The biggest draw ever. You can see it just happened this morning. The lowest score, 75. No, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, um, like your eyes aren't playing tricks on you. 75 CRS score, 27,332. This is unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. And it's all... Um, when you look at this, never before have they done a surprise draw like this. Like this is absolutely amazing. And for those of you who are in Canada right now, this is some of the most amazing news that you've ever, ever heard. Now, this is the second live I've done today because there's just so many people interested in talking about this, what this means for them. That's what we're going to talk about today. What this means for you as a Canadian experience class applicant, what this means for you if you're outside as a federal skilled worker, and even for the federal skilled trades and PNPs. That's what we're going to talk about today in this live. There is going to be an unbelievable number of happy people. If you're one of those people that got an invitation to apply today, I want you to post in the comments, <clears throat> whether you're watching on uh, Periscope, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, I want to hear your comments. I want to hear what you have to say because we. this is something that is literally shaken the whole foundation of express entry. Now, we know, we know that the government is now turning their mind to individuals in Canada, but what does that mean for you guys outside? All right, what does that mean? So that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, let's jump over here. And uh, Abhishek right here says that this is Valentine's Day is the gift by IRCC. Yes, it is. Absolutely, it is a gift. And then Anbu says, FSW draw map happened in April and after. It is entirely possible. One of the things that I really, really need you guys to understand is that don't listen to anyone that tells you because you're outside of Canada that your, your hopes are now dashed. You don't have any options. Only the can people in Canada have options. Don't listen to them. Anyone, any of those haters that's telling you that you don't have a chance, ignore them. You may not have an opportunity right at this moment, but remember, express entry is about those who are tenacious, who do not give up, who keep their profile in the pool because who in their right mind would have imagined that the government would have done a draw that scooped every single person that had Canadian work experience out of the draw. Some of you are wondering, how is it even possible to have a CRS score of 75 and get an invitation? How is it even possible that they extended invitations to 27,332 people today on a Saturday? How is it possible? Well, you have to look at the Canadian experience class. This is a, this. let's flip over and let's take a look at it so you guys can see the source of it. Right here we have, and I'm going to move this over so that it covers the whole screen. Right here, 
we have the actual round of invitations page. You can see it. As we scroll down here, you can see that they have actually um, extended this just for the Canadian Experience class right here. But let's go back. I'm going to flip back one screen to the actual ministerial instruction itself. You can see here the number of invitations issued, 27,332. So anyone, you can see here at that total or above, um, right here, it's just crazy. Um, the, the, the rank required to be invited to apply, 27,000 people. Now, if you look at the date and time of, it just happened this morning. This is hot off the press. The CRS score, the lowest ranked candidate was 75. And here is the key, tiebreaker rule. Anyone who submitted an application before September 12th or right on 1531 UTC, that person was the cutoff. Personally, I think everybody at um, that was 75 points and higher is getting an invitation to apply that are under the Canadian Experience class. What does it take to get drawn under the Canadian Experience class? Well, all you need is to have a CLB5, okay? That's super low. We're not talking about a nine. We're talking about a five <clears throat> in all abilities, <clears throat> excuse me, and have one year of skilled work experience in Canada. That could be a food service supervisor, okay? That could be even a trade level person. So people are wondering, how is this possible? How can someone with only 75 points get an invitation to apply? All they have to do is meet the minimum eligibility criteria for the CEC. So if you're someone who's in Canada who has one year of skilled work experience and has even a CLB level five, so on the Canadian language benchmark, um, like those scores are so low. Okay, let's flip back here and I'm going to show you how low that is. So if we go here and we go to language... Uh, language equivalency chart. Oh, we'll probably be able to just IRCCEE. -E. Let's pull it up and I'll show you how low this is. Okay, so here we're on the page. We're going to scroll down. We're going to, I'm going to show you how low this is. On the cell pip, well, they're straight across, five across the board. Okay, and remember, you're in Canada with one year of skilled work experience, at least a knock level B or higher. And on the IELTS, just to put you outlanders, understand what this means. It is a four in reading. Five and everything else equates to a CLB five, which is the minimum level to qualify through the Canadian experience class. So you guys can do the math. You can see how absolutely, you know, how it got down to 75 points. It is crazy. So those of you who are Canadian experience class candidates, this is your one opportunity. Those of you who are at 76 points, this is your one opportunity and you cannot screw it up. If you get something wrong, you guys know how often I've said that immigration is ruthless. When officers, I can, okay, picture this, okay? I'm going to turn this little scroller off and I want you to listen carefully. Picture this. Picture an individual, and I don't want this to be too loud. I hope my, my audio isn't too loud. I've been just screaming here. I'll turn this down but I want you to picture an officer who is in their home looking at a laptop, just like I'm looking at, now sees that their workload has increased astronomically. I can tell you that they are not going to show mercy. If someone meets every requirement and have done things correctly, you will become a permanent resident of Canada. If you miss one thing, that officer who has quotas, who's fighting to process these as quickly as possible so that these massive 401,000, um, you know, candidates who uh, the quota for permanent residents that the government has set, who knows that they have a critical role to play in getting these applications turned around for in Canada, they are not going to show mercy to you. If you're missing one little thing, they're going to bounce your application and move on to the next person. Okay, so do not listen to anyone that says this is a simple, easy process. Don't worry about it. It is riddled with areas and possibilities where officers can refuse your application for being incomplete. So that's the first thing I want to tell you CECers. You have to get it right now. Now, people that watch my YouTube videos, people that are in my step-by-step -step course, my express entry step-by-step -step course right now, I just got off an awesome Zoom call with uh, with the individuals that are in this cohort, they know, they know 
all of the possible areas where things can fall apart. But those of you out there who are submitting your own applications understand that you have to be meticulous. And many of the people in the group have told me, Mark, I've been following you for two years. My goodness, I've been following you since 2016 when you first started doing this. And, and they have researched, they have spent time, they have put all of their effort in. Well, you now have 90 days to get this right. And that, folks, is why I completed and why I created the whole step-by-step -step course. The link is below. Click on the link to register when the next class goes live. I was going to wait until April. I was not going to open up the course again. We've got a big group of people that are going through. I was going to open it up for a little bit and then wait and then open up again. But you guys do not have an opportunity to wait. You don't. You have 90 days to get this right. And so the course is going to be opened up next week for Monday. Watch for it. The next group is going to be launched and we are going to push forward and I'm going to do everything that I can to help you guys make sure that it is done correct. Okay, so click on that link. If you want to book a consult, I'm happy to talk to you, but, but just this course walks you through every step of the, the process so that you don't have to waste these precious, precious 90 days to make sure that you've got everything correct. Every single step along the process, there is an individual video that tells you how to fill out the information in your EAPR. And there's a separate section for all of the documents that all relate to every aspect of the express entry process. And in this course that I'm offering, you have direct access to me to ask questions that you just can't find anywhere else. Those of my, my group that are in here, post right now your experience going through the course so that everybody else knows what to expect. All right, let's jump in here. I want to hear what you guys have to say. This is absolutely crazy. Siddharth, Siddhant here is, is tagging Amit. He's letting everybody know, oh my goodness, this draw has happened. Okay, all right, here's one of the most common questions. Masood says, what does it mean to, for FSW candidates? Does the score drop since many people will go out of the pool? It is entirely possible going forward with all of the CECs pulled out that yes, it can have a, a, like a, 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 the effect of reducing the score for outlanders. It is possible that that could happen. With the travel restrictions, and as I indicated in my video, you have to go back, you have to watch it. I'm going to show you guys actually, if we go here to the, the Facebook page, if you go to the YouTube channel, I want you guys to take a look. Those of you who are on Facebook, if you go to my YouTube channel, I'll pull it up right now. And we click on here, we go to my channel right here. You will see that just earlier on Saturday, I did this video right here. Number two, Express Entry 2021, what will happen in 2021? Go back, watch that video. I explain in detail why I thought what just happened could potentially happen. Now, I never ever dreamed that going through this process, that they would call everybody out. But I suggested that the scores for CEC candidates could drop down as low as 413, which was the lowest draw ever. My goodness, this has blown it away, 75. So in Canada, this is, this is the, the miracle of all miracles. People that never dreamed they would get an ITA because they were too old, their education wasn't good enough, um, they, they didn't score high enough on the language tests, all of that is gone for you. The government of Canada takes care of the people that are in. A massive shout out to Immigration Minister Marco Mendicino, his staff. A massive shout out to Immigration Refugees and Citizenship Canada and those amazing officers, the people that are driving the express entry process and to the government of Canada itself who has now seen the importance of immigrants to the future and lifeblood of our country. Big shout out. A big applause to all of you out there who were involved in this decision. We have thrown down the gauntlet. We have said Canada is the number one country for immigrants in the world, full stop. No one has done this before. This is unbelievable. All right, let's see what else the listeners who are tuning in. Comment below, did you get an ITA? Were you one of those lucky people? Comment below. What do you think of this massive, largest draw ever in the history of Express Entry? Post, I want to hear what you have to say. I'm just going to just adjust here my screen a bit. Okay. All right. Let's dive in and let's see what other people have to say. 
Okay, uh, Yaren says, does this mean that study permits would be more hard to get as we move forward? I don't know what to make of this. Yaren, no one knows what to make of, it, of this exactly. But I want to tell you guys something, and I'm going to repeat this over and over again. Do not listen to the haters. Just because we have received this massive express entry surprise draw, and just because this crazy draw has scooped out all of the CEC candidates, does not mean that you, if you're outside of Canada, as an applicant under the Federal Skilled Worker Program, that Canada does not care about you. Do not listen to any haters who are trying to tell you that. The only reason that Canada is not bringing in you right now is because of this insane pandemic. So you are being held back until the travel restrictions are lifted, until this, this COVID-19 pandemic has been brought under control because it is bad in Canada. Things have not improved. We are waiting for our vaccines. They're not being rolled out as fast as we want. So we suspect that throughout this whole year, there's not going to be many of you outlanders that are going to be able to come into Canada. Because of that, and because of these massive 401,000 um, spots that the government has to fill, understand they are trying desperately to figure out where they're going to come from. Now we know, and what I talked about last Saturday has come to fruition. If you're in Canada, you had one year of skilled work experience, you are now going to see your ticket to Canada punched. And not just to Canada because you're here, but your ticket to becoming a permanent resident and a future citizen. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. All right. So many questions. So many people are asking. They want clarification. Let's see what I can do here as we work through this. Okay. Um, okay. Jacob says, is the CEC score going to rise further or is it going to drop between 400 to 430? Well, understand you guys, if they've pulled out every candidate at 75, let's go back to the website. I want to look at these rounds of invitations. I want you to see as of February the 8th, okay, as of February the 8th, this is what the number of candidates in the pool look like, okay? So you can see in this range all the way down to the very bottom, which is pretty much this, you can see how many people are in this category, how many people are actually in the pool. There are 152 thousand people in this in this co like in the pool as of as of February the 8th there were that many people so you can see how competitive how ultra competitive it is internationally to get into to get into Canada those that are in Canada right now those that are Canadian experienced class eligible candidates with one year of skilled work experience well how many are there well, as of February the, the 13th, when we had the draw this morning, there were 27,332 of these individuals here that have now been pulled out as CEC candidates. What does that mean? The rest of the people that are in here are PNPs, but you'll see, I want to show you another thing. This total, February the 8th, also that total, if we go back to the rounds of invitations, was still was still before they pulled out 654 PNP candidates, okay? Where did those 54 PNP candidates come from? If we go back here, you can see right here, okay? They're right in here as of February the 8th, and then when the draw happened for the last PNP, there were a few more that snuck in right before this round of invitations on February the 10th. And then after February the 13th, today, the groundbreaking, unbelievable announcement that just happened. Um, we know that of those individuals, 27,000 are pulled out. So how many, we have still over 100,000 federal skilled worker candidates in the pool. And if we look at the actual scores, we know that the lowest that it's gone down to for your outland candidates was 468. And that was back in December. So 468, if we look at the totals, here's 471. We know that all of these people are still hanging out in here, right? Up to 500 plus the over 1,000 that are 500 or more. How do you get into this range? Well, you get into that range by having Canadian work experience. You get into that range by most often having French language ability, those extra bonus points or a job offer, okay? The PNP nominations up here over 600. Those are individuals with provincial nominee um, 
nominations, essentially. So there is a massive number of people that are federal skilled worker that are in here. And what that means for all of you is that it is still super competitive and you do not, you cannot, you must not slacken off. You must continue to make sure your profile is in there. You are fighting tooth and nail to increase your language scores. Learn French if you need to. Take another course if you need to, to get two or more credentials. In order to maximize your points as an Outland applicant, you need to have a minimum of CLB9. That is eight in listening and seven in the other abilities on the IELTS score. You need to have a minimum of three years of skilled work experience. And you need to make sure that um, you have at least two or more credentials, a bachelor's degree of at least three years or more, plus one other credential, a diploma, or a master's degree. That is the very bare minimum that you need to really give you a shot if you're outside of Canada because of those bonus transferability points. How do you want to increase your score? Like I said, learn French. The, the options or the opportunities or possibilities of getting a job offer in Canada are really low because of the pandemic. Improve your English, learn French, take another course of study. All of those things are going to help you. We know that age is an issue. Once you hit 30, you're losing five points. Once you hit into the 40s, you're losing 10 points, okay? But if you want a shot and you're in that range, get your profile in now. Even if your scores aren't what you want them to be, get your profile in so that you benefit from any tiebreakers. If we go back here and we look at this, the round of invitations was right on 75. Anybody at 75 who submitted their application after 1530 UTC on September the 12th did not receive an invitation to apply. I personally think with this odd number here that probably all of the 75ers got drawn. But if you look at the history, sometimes the difference between you getting drawn and if let's go back here and let's look I want to show you one other thing here before we get to some more comments. If you go back and look at the federal skilled worker draws and you see the last open draw, no specified program, occurred on December 23rd, right before, right before Christmas. 5,000 people were drawn. 468 was the round of invitations. But I can tell you, not every person that had a 468 total was given that invitation to apply. Only 5,000 total were. So anyone who submitted their application at that time after June 4th, 2020 at 1339 UTC, even though they had 468, did not receive an ITA because that's where the cutoff was. So for those of you who are out there wondering, what should I do? I, should I consider going to school? Should I still consider um, you know, uh, uh, submitting my profile even? You have to seriously consider doing everything you can to get in so that you benefit as early as possible from that tiebreaker. All right, crazy. This is insane. Never before have we seen anything like this. Okay, we've got Sanjay from Dubai. Good to see you. Um, Oli says, hey, Mark, you're doing a wonderful job helping applicants from all over the world. Thank you, my friend. There's Ralph who's in the course right now. Good to see you, my friend. Everybody's jumping on. Okay, let's see what Sanjay says. Okay, and these are questions that you guys are asking. I know you are. If I create an express entry profile and later after six months I apply for a study permit, will it have a negative impact on the immigration officer's view of the study permit application? Yes, it can. You have to demonstrate that you have an intention of going back home after you complete your studies. It's one factor and one factor only that an officer can look at, but absolutely it is entirely possible that they could look at that as a negative factor and it could impact on whether or not that study permit gets approved. One of many. Okay, and Keith says, Namaste, Mark. Can a refugee claimant uh, waiting for a decision apply for PR visa, express entry, or any other method? If you're in Canada as a refugee applicant or claimant, nope, you can't. Okay, Nicholas says, Hello, do I need to translate six months of bank statements to apply for EE? Um, if they're in a different language and your bank doesn't give you a letter that says, hey, your, your last six months, uh, that shows the average balance over the last six months, then yes, I do include those last six months of bank statements. And if they're not in English, yes, I get them translated, which, yep, costs money, but it is the way it is. Okay, awesome. I'm going to clap this. This person is in my Express Entry Law private Facebook group. It's over 126,000. 
Go to Facebook, go check it out, join it. It's an awesome, massive group of people that are all in this together. So congratulations to all those who got invitations. You bet, big, massive celebration. As I did before, it's crazy. We can, we can play some music. We can make it snow. <laughs> Woo! Unbelievable. This is so crazy. You know, as a Canadian immigration lawyer, I never dreamed that this would ever be possible for them to drop down to 75 points, giving 27,332 people a chance. And all I can say, as I've said repeatedly, do not spoil this. Do not blow it. Do not make a simple mistake. Let's play this out. Immigration officer is sitting in her, in her home. That's where they're processing these, in front of a small little computer screen. She's under pressure. She's got 27,000. She's a part of turning around 27,000 applications. Now, not everybody's going to submit it. Some people will decline because they're crazy. But the, the reality is this officer is sitting at her computer. She is processing these as fast as she can. She's got super pressure from her supervisor. Her supervisor's got huge pressure from the, the uh, director above her, uh, above her. And you've got all of this, this push now to turn this around and meet the government's targets for immigrants for this year. Are they going to be patient with you? No. Are they going to give you a second chance to submit something that you got wrong? No. Are they going to give you a second chance at immigrating to Canada when your score was maybe 100? No. And, and I don't care if people feel like Mark here is, is just trying to promote something. Everybody can do it on their own. My goodness. You cannot take the chance of, of sailing this ship through this gift, this massive gift alone. That is why I created the course. That is why I went in and I created my step-by-step -step course that is absolutely, this is it here. This is the course right here. There are over 56 individual video lessons that walk through every part of the process, learning the basics. Module two is about starting with your express entry profile. Module three is completing your profile. And for all of you 27,000 who already have your profile in, these first three modules are nothing. The weight and the meat and the, the benefit of this course is that module four is all about the EAPR. And when I say about the EAPR, I actually walk through every part of the process and if I scroll through here and show you my screen, bring someone in. I'm gonna pause this. I actually show you how to complete every single part of every section within the EAPR so that you don't make those mistakes that get people get their application refused. You cannot afford to get it refused. You can't. This is maybe your only opportunity and you have to do it right. And I am not this money grubbing lawyer. So that's why I created the course. You know, you can hire me. Yes, I, I charge $4,000 for this awesome collaborative review. You can go over to my website. You can book a consult. I give credit for the consult towards retaining our firm. You can go here to the resort. You can go to About Us. You can click on our approach. You can watch the videos on how we are truly a client-centered, firm-supported um uh, a law firm. Um, you can watch the video on what the collaborative review process is. We've got instructions on how it works, how we compare with other representatives. All of that's here. Go to healthylaw.com. If you want to book a consult, you can click on the link below, do that. So all of that's available. But I recognize that that is for people who have really challenging situations where they need to hire a lawyer. This is not necessarily a rule for someone who has a fairly straightforward process and just needs to make sure that, they, that they're not screwing it up, that they're getting it right. So that is why I created this DIY step-by-step -step course, this complete walkthrough. Now, not only does it walk through every step on how to fill things out, but the part that I love the most is module six, which is loaded with sample documents to make sure you've done it right. Passports, medicals, police certificates, education, records of employment, and in the records of employment section, and for each of them, there is an individual video walking you through all of the critical, compo critical components. And not just that, 
There is downloads. There is sample. We've got awesome tools for calculating your hours. This is something that I want you guys to understand. I'm going to open this up. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it. I'm going to try to open this up. This right here, good, you can see it. This right here is our CEC hours of work tool. It is specifically designed to help people figure out how to calculate and present to the immigration officer. All this is instructions on how to do it to prove that you actually have that one year, to prove that the one year you put in your, your, um, in your pool, like in your profile, actually works. And this is our table that we've created to help you calculate it. And this goes right into your letter of explanation. This is something we just created like three days ago, brand new tool. So this is here to help you who are uncertain. And the, and the, the classic example is someone who has had their application in the pool. Everybody's been drawn out. It may be early for you. You may be someone who actually has only worked 11 months and they just give you credit because it's calculated by month. They may have gave you credit for more months of work experience than you actually obtained in Canada. You may have received your ITA early. This helps you and we can guide you and teach you how to keep this ITA so that you don't lose it, so that you're presenting things in the way they need to be presented so that you are not losing out on this unbelievable once in a lifetime opportunity. And I think I can fairly say that. In the records of employment section here, there's tons of explanation, tips, links, tools. You can see here that we have a record of employment checklist here. I have what if you can't get the reference letter? And this one is full of a whole bunch of other tips and strategies and ideas on what you can use instead of your actual reference letter. Okay, so that's there. We go back here, there's sample reference letters. Now those I don't advertise all over like those ones you see online because these sample reference letters, if, if all 27,000 people uses my sample reference letter and there's 27,000 individual employers all using the same thing, my goodness, this officer that is sitting in her desk processing your application is gonna see three out of the 10 that are all the same letter and they're thinking, what, oh my goodness, like is there fraud here? There's all these letters look the same. That's why I don't put, post it freely. That's why it's only available for people that, that subscribe to the step-by-step -step course. Um, in here, we have a knock selection tool, which helps you to line up exactly your duties in a way that this officer sitting in her home, looking at a computer, understands. So if I open this up and you look at it, this selection tool, I, this is an example of exactly how I lay it out for a food service supervisor, which sets out a breakdown of the lead statement, the reference letters, duties, all of this. And then I even give examples of reference letters that, that I use to build this out. And sometimes I'll even include the actual position profile. So all of that is in there. It's all available for people that subscribe to the course. This is hands down the best resource anywhere to help you do your application on your own at a price that you can actually afford. And not only this, look at this, sample reference letters. I've got like 30 different sample reference letters all for you to see that it's not what the letter looks like, but what the letter contains, that is the secret. And of course, I'm talking here, I'm showing you all these things and I'm not even showing my screen. My goodness, this is, I'm so excited, I'm so flustered <laughs> that I'm not even showing you the proper screen. You can see here, CEC hours of work tool. Um, I clicked on that one and I showed you that one. It's all designed for people that are actually going through. This tool you'll find in the course and it breaks down step-by-step step how you can actually document it and present it to an officer. You just simply click on this table, include it in your letter of explanation and the rest is history. All right, going back to everything else. You can see down here, I already talked about these, all the reference letters, knock selection tool. You can find it all in the course. So why am I saying this? People are like, Mark, why do we care? Because I don't want you to make that mistake. I built this for you. It's available for you. Click on the link and give, send your email address so that when I open it up, whoever puts their emails in, they're going to be the first ones to get notification. And literally on Monday of next, not this Monday, but the following Monday is when the next course is going to be launched, the next group. And I haven't decided what the cap is going to be right now. The current cap is only 100. There's no way that's going to work with everybody. So I may increase it to, to, to more, but I just want you guys to understand. Okay, enough of that. Let's get back to answering everyone's questions. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, Jeffin says, good morning, Mark. Uh, 
quick, um, can an inland CAC applicant who's on the postgrad work permit now with outland spouse apply for a spousal open work permit or do they reject the application because it can activate EE again? Jeff, and it depends on the country. There's nothing stopping you from applying. Ultimately, the officer is going to make that determination. Some countries are more cruel than others and absolutely some are more prejudicial with these types of situations. So it depends on the country that you're in. Okay. All right. Congratulations to all. I love it when you guys are sub celebrating everyone else's successes. Okay. Let's see here. Uh, Ravi, Ravi, Ravi. Wow. Hi, Mark. This all seems so surreal. Still can't believe it. Any chance there might be a correction? No, Ravi. This is correct. Get into the course, my friend. Get in there. You've been one of my faithful followers since the beginning. Let's get your application done properly. Let's make sure that you actually get to take advantage of this massive, massive news. It's it's so crazy. It is crazy to believe what has just happened. A CEC draw that dipped down all the way to 75. No, no, you're not hearing me. You're not mishearing me. 75. A CRS score of 75 for in-Canada applicants with one year of skilled work experience. They drew out everybody. There are very few that have not been drawn out. 27,332. This is mind-blowing. This is absolutely mind-blowing. All right. That is amazing. Okay. Let's see. Uh, Jaya says, thanks, Mark. You bet. Okay. Bouchon says, Bouchon, 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 my buddy. How can IRCC process these many applications now, especially when there's already a huge backlog? Understand the backlog is because they're not processing them. The backlog is because they're not doing anything with outland applications. They're only processing the ones in Canada. So they just hired 30 people at the end of last year in November 2020. They're hiring another 60 people right now. How they're going to be distributed amongst the various networks, I don't know. But I know a ton of them are being hired to process express entry. And this is a very, very good reason to bring something else up. When you have 90 brand new officers who many understand these are newly hired people, some are moved over from different portfolios, but you've got a massive influx of new people who know they do not know as much as you do about express entry processing your application. Do you want to leave your application to chance? Do you want to just assume that they understand something? No, you cannot take a chance. It has to be perfect. Your application has to have everything in it that you need so that you do not lose out on this opportunity. Mistakes will be made. There will be mistakes on the part of officers processing these applications. When you have 27,000 that you're bringing in, there's going to be mistakes made. And you need to have someone at your back to make sure that you are not setting your application up for a small little omission. What are some examples? Well, you have failed to upload a color copy of your German police certificate. Um, you've chosen the wrong knock code. Your reference letter doesn't have hours of work in it. You have um, listed your address as being in one location and your personal history says you're somewhere else. And then an officer has to come back and ask for more details. And in the process of doing that, you make a mistake. You put inconsistent information in the second upload that doesn't match the first. And that officer says, you've misrepresented. I'm barring you for five years. Please understand it is serious. That is what the world looks like right now. Anything, the smallest little thing. You forgot to include a traffic report for Queensland in Australia. Application returned. You forgot to include a police certificate for a country um, that you already obtained one, but you obtained it before you left that country. That police certificate's invalid. 27,000 applications, just like this astute listener says, how can they get through it? By being ruthless, by being efficient, by not showing any mercy. And that is why I created the course. That's why I created this, you guys, okay? Now, not only on top of all of these modules that I've talked about here, this course right here, not only is it full of a complete walkthrough, 2021, these are all new videos. I just created them literally this year. Wow, I can't believe how, how well-timed this was. Not only do you have this, but when you subscribe to the course, it is a course guided by me. Everybody that gets into this first 
this next cohort, number two, because I'm doing one right now, will have access to me. Every morning at 9 a.m., it's your opportunity to answer, to ask questions in the Facebook group. And if I go back here, I'm going to flip back here and then I'm going to show you the Facebook group in just one second so you can see why this is a game changer, why this is completely different than any of these other guides that are out there. This course right now is guided by me. And in order to make it happen, I have created a, I've actually created a special group that's only for this particular set of people that have purchased the course. And if I flip over here to the website, this is it, the Express Entry Masterclass. This one's February 8th to February 19th. On that Friday, that's when it comes to an end. The very next Monday in February is at the 2021, the 22nd of February is when I'm going to do it again. Everybody in the group has access to all of the lives. We just did, uh, uh, we just did a live just this morning before we announced it. Anyone who's in here, and you can see the celebration, the Sura, oh my goodness. And people post the questions in here. They post the comments. And when it, and basically, um, we're just like one big family, a big, massive family. All of the comments, everyone helps each other. I go in, I answer the questions. All of the videos are there, and they're there for you for life. And so this is the difference. Not only do you get this course, which I've marketed, sold for three years, but I've decided to create what I call a master class where people that come in, no longer do you have to search wondering if you have the right answers. No longer do you have to spend hundreds of hours trying to figure out the correct um, uh, process. You don't have the time. No longer do you have to face the situation of getting something wrong and getting your dream of immigrating to Canada. And in your case, remaining in Canada after you spent thousands of dollars, maybe for some of you, hundreds of thousands on your education. No longer do you have to see that dream disappear because that's what this step-by-step -step course does. All right. And once again, I'm wondering if I shared the screen with you. I think I did. <laughs> yes. So there it is. And there will be a brand new one that opens up. You have access to this for life. All right. Let's keep responding to questions. I have no time limits here. I'm going to get through as many as I possibly can. This is awesome. Okay, zipping through. Let's get down here. Um, okay, this person says, I've not received an ITA yet. Tuning in on Periscope. <laughs> Woo! This is getting reach all over the, all over the internet. I love it when I have Periscopers uh, that are tuning in. I've not received my ITA yet. My score is 472 under CEC. It is coming, my friend. It is coming. There are 27,000, what is it, 322? <laughs> what is the total? I think it is. I keep looking at this. There's so many, so many changes. 27,000, what do we have here? Yes, 27,322 um, individuals that have been extended that notification of interest. And can you, can you imagine how long it takes for a system to roll out 332, not 22. Can you imagine how long it's going to take the system to slowly push out all those invitations to apply? In the past, we could always count on it coming in about 24 hours. Um, but with this number, it's entirely possible that it could take a number of days. But if you're in this category and you're just like this person right here, it's coming, my friend. It's coming. It's coming. When you get that ITA, Click on the link below. Leave me your email address so that I can notify you as moment the moment I open it up. I wasn't going to open it up till April, but you have no time to lose. 90 days, and I need to be able to help as many people as I possibly can. Okay. Okay, Facebook user, look great. Have one question. Will this amazing draw today will make FSW scores less than 450? At this stage, you know me. I am 100% honest. Whoever dreamed that 75 would work? Whoever dreamed? I never in my wildest dreams thought it would ever drop down to 75 for CECs. In fact, on my, in my video on Saturday, go back to the YouTube channel. You guys watch it. My predictions for 2021. That video, I go into detail as to everything, how it's all played out, how it's all led to this. Well, you have to understand that if you look at the numbers and how many people are being admitted, there are a massive number of federal skilled worker candidates that are well above 450. 
And if we go back to the site and we look at the rounds of invitations and um, let's just go straight to, so here is the round of invitation 170 and there's the full text, which I opened up and I don't really want the full text, but that's okay. Uh, let's go back here and I am going to backtrack just one second here. Okay, so if you look at this and we go one more back to the actual rounds and you look at this, 450, right here, 451. So if you go 451 to 500, there are 26,000 people outside of Canada in that range. So is it possible? Well, anything is possible. Anything is possible. Will it dip down to the point where our good friend here, uh, this Facebook user on the Express Entry Law private Facebook group, will it dip down to 450? I don't know. But you absolutely need to get your profile in the pool. Subscribe to the course. Those first three modules are all about you guys. Do I proceed? Should I hire an overseas agent? Dispense with all of that. Purchase the course, get in, let me help you to maximize your chance, but you need to do it quick, get in as soon as possible so that you benefit from this, this tiebreaker rule. If the score is at 450 or the score is at 449 and it's an open draw, they're pulling in everyone and you've had your profile in longer than someone else, you're gonna get that ITA before them. So get it in now, then work at improving your score. Yes, it's only in there for a year, but we just don't know what the future holds. 401,000 401, spots for permanent residence in this year that the government has announced is going to be extremely difficult to reach. If the travel restrictions are lifted, guess who is going to get the benefit of that? They're going to start piling in you outlanders. So don't listen to any of the haters out there. Kick them loose. No one would have anticipated that. Okay, and we're going to try to focus the questions on this announcement, okay? Okay, Halak says, I'm a mechanic. Can I have a chance to come to Canada? <coughs> right now, it's really, Halak, people that are in Canada already working as a mechanic. That's really who this is targeted to. We got a couple hellos, big shout out. Um, Hannah says, this is amazing, such a great day. Got an AOR today, and this massive draw happened today. This is good luck. I agree. Congratulations to you, Hannah. Okay, here's another one. Suk Deep, I've said this repeatedly. No, 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 no. It is not dead. It is absolutely not dead. The only reason the outlanders are not coming in is because of the travel restrictions. Immigration wants you here. They absolutely want you here. But they can't issue conf confirmations of permanent residence when you can't board a plane and travel. It's public health in Canada that makes those decisions. It's, it's trying to corral this horrible coronavirus, right? Trying to get into control the spread of the, the, the virus. All of these things are resulting in individuals not being able to travel that are outland. It's resulting in international spouses being separated. You know, it's resulting in families, the, the inability for families to, to, to unify and, and the reunification of those families in Canada. It's resulted in study permit holders going through what they're going through right now. And this is something that I want to tell you study permit holders. If you're outside Canada going to schools in Canada, I told you guys repeatedly. But apparently, you know, I'm not an, I'm not an education agent who I have huge issues with. Because they've been peddling and the schools, the universities have been peddling. Come, register. Maybe you can't travel now. Start online. It'll be all good. Well, that is garbage. Because right now I want to tell you, if you have not completed more than 50% of your studies in Canada, you are not getting comprehensive ranking system points as it stands right now. So if someone duped you into thinking, hey, you can get those extra points and, um, and even if you're studying outside, you can study up to 50%, so it's no problem. This is the biggest tragedy of all because you right now are not getting those Canadian education points towards your comprehensive ranking system. You're not getting those 15 or 30 points that you would otherwise get unless you've, you've actually studied in Canada for at least, well, at least half or more of the actual uh, program that you're taking, okay? If it's a two-year program, you got to do one in Canada. If it's a one-year program, 
you know where I'm going with this. I already told you don't do one-year programs. They're a complete waste to start with. But I told you guys that, I would, that I'm not advising people to go and, and, um, and to study virtually. So some schools are opening up. Individuals where there's plans, they're able to come. You guys are okay. But the rest of you, you're not getting those points. Now, well, there is one thing I want to tell you guys, and that's that if you are studying outside, the study that you're doing in the Canadian school will still give you the ability to get a post-grad work permit and to apply for it. So that's one benefit. So you might not get the education points, but you will get, even if your studies are 100% completed out, you'll get credit for them based on the rules that are in place at the time of this recording. They are giving uh, credit towards your post-grad work permits once you complete your studies to then apply for that work permit. Okay, but the travel restrictions are still blocking people who don't have a job. Open work permits are still being blocked. So coming as an international student, if you're not already here, is very problematic. Now, with that being said, I'm not telling you not to go through the process and to apply. But look very carefully at the school. Look at the program you're going to take. And make sure that if your study permit is approved, you can actually travel to Canada and attend classes. Anything else? I don't advise anyone to come study in Canada until the travel restrictions are lifted. Okay. All right. So there is that. Wow. Can you guys believe this? This is insane. I can't believe where we're at with this. I can't believe that we've just had this massive draw. This has been unbelievable. Unbelievable. Okay. Cruising down here. Uh, Carlos says, my ITA today. Thanks, my heavenly father. Ah, <laughs> nice ring. We'll even play some music for Carlos. Some happy music. I don't have a big variety of music to play here. This is awesome. We could actually play something that's maybe even, um, even a little bit. Um... Oh, Carlos, we're all so happy for you, my friend. And to all of you out there who are express entry candidates no more, you are individuals that have actually received your invitation to apply and your dream of coming to Canada is a reality. Let it snow. <laughs> this is so cool. And the reality is... This is the kind of fun that you guys are going to have in the course. <laughs> so fun. So fun. Okay, we'll turn off the snow. Let's get back to some more comments. This is just so awesome. Congratulations, Carlos. Okay, JS says, Mark, can you provide valuable inputs on future FSW draws with CRS 468? Any chance for an ITA this year? I think I've covered that in length. We've talked about that a lot. Yes, Marlon, thanks for the government for giving us a chance. Once again, massive shout out to IRCC, um, Minister uh, Mendicino, his staff, the, 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 uh, the civil servants, um, program delivery, all of you amazing, amazing uh, people that have made the decision to scoop out all of these so deserving people in Canada who for a very long time didn't look like they were going to have a chance. They were too old. Their education wasn't high enough. The CRS scores were just skyrocketing. The language wasn't perfect off the charts, but they had devoted their time, their, their efforts, their savings, their life to immigrating to Canada, to coming as a worker. You now have that opportunity. So thank you, Canada. What an amazing country. I have never been prouder of my country. I think personally that Canada is the number one country for immigration in the world. If you agree, give me a thumbs up. Big shout out. Props to my country. Awesome. All right. Let's keep cruising on here. Let's see what else we got. Um, okay. Sahil, I've told you, hang in there, buddy. It's coming. It's coming. If you're over 75, which is everybody and their dog, essentially, that has at least a year of skilled work experience, that has a profile in the pool, that has at least a CLB5, well, you wouldn't have got into the pool unless you met those minimum requirements. Okay. All right, Abdur, uh, looking for a work permit. Can't help you, my friend. <laughs> Everybody's saying, is, is FSW dead? I've already told you. Don't listen to those haters. It is not dead. The travel restrictions are the only thing that's keeping people away. You still subscribe to the course. Let me teach you how to set your profile up, maximize your chances, prepare for when the travel restrictions are lifted. 
You were one of the first ones that are drawn in a new draw under the federal skilled worker. Do not listen to the haters. Don't. Okay. Let's see what else people have to say. Um, yes, Yaren, this is absolutely the consequence of ambitious targets until 2023. Um, my outlook for 2024, would it be as ambitious as 2021 to 2023? Absolutely. Like we have a government that repeatedly, you guys, repeatedly has said and valued the role that immigrants play in our future. We are not having as many children. Well, I'm doing my role in that. <laughs> I have four children, but I am very, very unusual. For the most part, we are not having children at a rate enough to replace the population that is dying. Like many Western countries, <clears throat> many countries, Canada, US, we're just not having as many children. And so if we hope our economy to continue to grow, we need to at the very least replace them and add more to help our economy flourish. You guys are the lifeblood of our economic recovery from this pandemic. In every discussion that I've had, I've been in roundtable discussions. Excuse me, I have appeared before the Standing Committee on Immigration. I have had many meetings with government officials, politicians, and I can tell you that there is a consistent theme across the board that immigrants are vital for our future. So what does the future hold? Hey, if this has happened now, I guess it's entirely possible that it could happen again. The targets are massive. The targets are ambitious. And yes, this only happened because the borders were closed and people couldn't come in and they need to find a way to fill those quotas. But wow, I am so proud to be a Canadian. I wish I had the Canadian national anthem. I would play it right now. <laughs> I would play it. No, I'm not going to sing it for you. <laughs> Maybe someone else would. Oh, Canada. Okay, we'll leave it. <laughs> this is so awesome. All right, let's see here. Um, okay, this person says, okay, how will this huge influx? So Steve is asking, Steve, it's great to see you. So how will this huge influx of applications affect FSW inland candidates who are being processed at this time? You're still going forward. When people are inside Canada, like your son, um, it is going forward. So they are only restricting people that are not in Canada that have to go through an overseas visa office. So in the case, um, Steve, of, of your son, for instance, um, the processing times are about nine months right now for inland applicants. And I absolutely, um, I absolutely envision that they're going to stick to that target from within Canada. Okay, and you said five months ago, I remember five months ago, right? Um, the, the reality is they're at about nine months right now in Canada. That's where they're at. So it's coming, my friend, it is coming. Okay, let's see what else here. Okay, <clears throat> Montero says, hey, if a person was issued, um, okay, was issued uh, with eight months, would he qualify for the new public policy postgrad expired last July, 2020, and is still in Canada? Okay, this one, I'm going to ring the bell, my friend. We need to look at a whole lot more. That means you go over to my website and you book right here a consultation with the firm. Click on the link below in the description, book a consult, and we can go through your eligibility because it's not just whether or not you can get your postgrad work permit. This relates specifically to your future, your life in Canada, whether or not you actually have a hope of being able to transition to permanent residence. So do that. Okay, <laughs> guys, this is a great one. So uh, Rajat says, please send your WhatsApp number. The way you connect with me, Rajat, man, I have a hard enough time keeping up with emails. Everything funnels through the consult. When you want to book a consult, when you want to speak to me, everything funnels through here, okay? And what happens is when you go in and you book a consultation with me, you can click on the link. <clears throat> you can actually pick the day that you want to connect with me and um, or one of the other lawyers in our firm, and you can book the, the consult appointment right on the spot. And when you have the consult with me, if you and I mutually determine that, hey, it's a good idea for us to represent you, your situation is really tricky, and you want to rep you want Whole Thing Immigration Law to represent you all the way through, then we give credit for that full consult fee towards the fee that we charge to represent you. So for everyone who's looking at that, remember that is always an option. I love working with people. I'm an immigration lawyer. I am the express entry lawyer. 
okay? And so I love working with people. And if you've got a tricky situation that's just really difficult and you can't figure it out on your own, it's not something that's going to be resolved in my step-by-step -step course, even when it's self-guided, book a consult. Myself, Alicia, Susan, we can help you. All right, let's see what else we've got here. The lots of questions about your Outlanders. Does this mean no FSW draws for the next couple of months? Amit, I thought I had a better idea. I never dreamed that I knew CEC would be the priority, but I never dreamed that there would be another FSW draw. The reality is it is entirely possible that there may not be an FSW draw for the next few months. That is very, very likely, but we know anything can happen. So don't let that thought of whether or not there's going to be a draw determine whether or not you submit your profile in the pool. As these people have found that have gone through who have received an invitation to apply with scores of less than 100 points. People told them it's a waste of time, don't do it. I told people it's a waste of time, don't do it. Who would have dreamed that this would have happened? And so because of this, I am telling people, get your profile in the pool. If you're in, you've got a shot. Do you wanna pay someone $1,500 or $2,000 or whatever they charge to submit a profile? When you're outland and you're under 450 points, if you're outland and you're under 400 points, no. Like, I don't think it's worthwhile doing that. But the key is, that's why I created the step-by-step -step course. Click on the link, leave your email address. You'll be notified as soon as I get it set up, which I'm going to be doing immediately for the next cohort, the next step-by-step -step course guided by me. It will start a week from Monday. The first ones to send their email address will be the first ones to have the cart opened. That is worth the money, okay? You guide the process. You can learn right away your chances. It'll give you all the tips and strategies and tools that you need and specific instructions. So easy. It's made the process so understandable. And you will then be able to do that without having to spend thousands of dollars. Now, if you want to retain me, I'm more than happy to help you. If you want that extra help, you're not sure, there's so much confusion, more than happy to help. But the course is designed, is designed for lots of people to share the cost of accessing my, my, um, my information um, that I'm sharing with you and the, and the self-guided course. All of that is, it's like magnifying, it's like scaling my ability to help as much people as possible. Well, if I'm answering the same question for you that your friend right here also has, then I don't have to say it twice. And you guys can share collectively in the cost of, of, of getting um, the information that I share, okay? Now, I want to point out one thing with all of this. All of the information I'm sharing, it's information. It's not legal advice. When you hear this bell, remember that specific legal advice, part of the reason I don't answer specific questions in here is because it is legal advice and you need to book a consult and go forward in that direction, all right? Okay, let's see what else we've got. Wow, this is crazy. I cannot believe. Um, okay, uh, Pooja says, can I add my spouse after the ITA? Yeah, it's possible now. If you're in Canada and you weren't including your spouse before, it is possible to add them with where the round of invitations is. And it's not easy. I've got a section in my step-by-step -step course that talks about all of that, how to, how to add them, all the things you need to take into consideration. I have a special video and instructions all on that puja. Okay. <laughs> Does the upcoming draw, will it be higher than 400? That one I can answer. All right. Keep zipping through here and I can see people are starting to kind of post multiple. <laughs> yeah. What is it? CRS 75? That basically means that the ranking system people receive for their human capital their language, their age, their work experience, all those things, their education, um, the score that they had was 75. And that person could potentially have received an invitation to apply or have one coming. Uh, okay, let's see, Celine. Ah, oh, Celine, hello, my friend. She said, guys, these live sessions with Mark are truly amazing. Now imagine having direct access to him. That is the master class. Go ahead and reserve your slot now. It's everything you need to know. Celine, she's in it. Okay, she's in it right now. That is so kind, Celine. I appreciate that because I know what you guys are thinking. You guys out there are thinking, oh, this is Mark, just a money-grubbing immigration lawyer looking to, to, to line his pockets with money. Do I want to make a living to support my family? Absolutely, I do. Do I love doing this? Yes, it is the most amazing job in the whole world. 
being able to do this to help you and to get paid. Now, remember, the reason I created this step-by-step course is because at a fraction of the cost that you would that you would spend to hire me personally, you can get into this group collectively and get all of your, your, your questions and the information you're seeking. It's all available there. And then as a bonus, a massive bonus, it's me leading the individual lives just like this every morning, 9 a.m., Monday through Friday, Monday through Friday, although we did a bonus in the course for this cohort of people. Today, we actually met on an awesome Zoom call. It was so much fun. And Celine was there. And uh, my other, the other people that are in the course, um, <laughs> let's see, Celine's got something else to say here. Um, she says, these live sessions with Mark are truly amazing. Now imagine having direct access to him. Yeah, that's the masterclass. I should know I'm part of the first ever masterclass. Go ahead and reserve your slot now. It's everything you need to <laughs> you need to know. And Celine, boy, uh, yeah, I'm not paying her anything to say that. That is very, very, very kind. But it's unbelievable what we can accomplish in this small group. All right, all right, zipping through there. Okay, post I add post March 18th, Copers. You're still waiting, my friend. You're still waiting. If you've notified. IRCC, when your COPER is going to expire and you've told them that you still want to come, you will not lose your opportunity. Okay. All right. Oh, Carlos. Yes. I think we already, um, I think we already celebrated Carlos, but he did receive his ITA today. That is so good. Um, okay. Balou says, I got it, ITA, but I have applied for my PNPPA, P. EI, what should I do? Subscribe to the course. We can talk about this together. We can talk about the strategies. The key is you're never going to you're never going to decline anything. You're going to take your ITA, you're going to go forward with it. You're going to let your PNP keep going forward until the prov- the province tells you that they they don't want to support you anymore. Do not withdraw from anything. Proceed forward immediately. And without hesitation, go forward, okay? And it's very interesting. I'll tell you guys, there's another impact to this, okay? There's another massive impact to what's just happened. And no one's probably talking about this. No one is talking about this at all on the internet. What people need to understand is that this is going to have huge ripple effects for the provincial nominee programs. Huge ripple effects. Because traditionally, they pull people that are currently in Canada. They're the ones that are getting nominated. Take the province of Alberta. Virtually every person that also has a profile in that Alberta was going to nominate this year has just received an invitation to apply. Alberta now is going to be extending tons of nominations to people that are in the C and D level, but for all of the other provinces. So they can still fill their quota with C and D. But after this, the other provinces that fill their quota with in-Canada applicants who are going through (coughs) employer-specific processes they are now going to have no candidates. They're gone. Poof. So what does that mean? It may very well mean that they're going to start looking outside of Canada to you federal skilled worker candidates who are in the pool. The notifications of interest for the human capital priority stream for Ontario, it's entirely possible that those candidates now who are in the pool are going to see invitations at a lower level that those notifications of interest, they may not even do a program-specific draw with IT. They may open it up to to general candidates because all of their in-Canada applicants have been called out. Watch. Watch and see what this does to PNPs. Just one more reason, you guys, why I tell you, don't believe FSW is dead. Ignore those haters. You have an opportunity. You absolutely have an opportunity. So do not lose it. Get into the pool. A PNP, Saskatchewan, their totals may drop because everybody's going through ITA. Why would you go through a paper-based application now? Any of the paper-based PNPs are taking 15 months or longer. Some are coming back sooner. I've had some clients that have had them done in a year. But why would you go through that process if instantly now you're eligible under the express entry CEC category? You've just received an ITA. So all of the provinces are going to be reeling. They're going to be wondering, what the heck are we going to do? Now we have to, we've got all these candidates who are going through express entry who we've, who we've nominated that are not going to go forward with the nomination. You guys have to understand that there's going to be ripple effects that are going to benefit everybody. No one's talking about this. So remember, Mark Holt, the express entry lawyer, told you, ignore the haters who said FSW is dead. 
And those of you who subscribe to the course, get in. I will help you to maximize your chance of getting a nomination from a province, maximizing your CRS score, giving yourself the best chance of realizing your dream of immigrating to Canada. So no haters out there. Uh Uh-uh. You do it, you guys. Go click on the link below. Click on that link and leave your email address. I will notify all of you the moment the new masterclass on Express Entry is open, guided by me with access to over 56 individual videos. Okay, let's keep zipping through here. Annette says, no ITA yet, but should be coming. Three years inland, sitting at 375. Ah, oh, you are the one that I am so happy for, Annette. This is so wonderful. I'm so happy for you. I would love to help you in your journey, but you are the people that I'm so excited for. People that that may not have the same level of, of education or I'm like turning 49 this year, you guys, 49. And I'm a zero for immigration. So anyone that's over 30, you start to lose points. So candidates that are even a little bit older wouldn't get drawn because their age points, they're losing them. But now it's all changed. This is so amazing, so amazing. Okay, let's see what else we see here. Any possibility we could see more CEC draws down the road? Absolutely, absolutely. There is no doubt about it. Yes, Amir, most of them in Canada, almost all are. Now, let me tell you something. There are some people that were in Canada that worked for a year and then went back and were trapped, okay? You are still given that invitation to apply if you met the CEC. Now, your application itself may take a little while to go through because you're caught in the same situation as others who were with ITA's Outland who can't travel. But even candidates who are not in Canada right now who had that one year of skilled work experience who were in the pool have an opportunity, okay? So remember that. Wow, this is so awesome. I am just so excited. Celine, oh yeah, congrats. Thank you so much for your kind comments, Celine. It was so much fun this morning, wasn't it, in our in our call? Okay, Lucy says, I entered the pool um, in August of 2020, but recently updated my profile in December. Do you think I will get the ITA? <laughs> yes, Lucy. Absolutely. If you are in Canada, okay, if you're in Canada, you will get an ITA. All right, zipping down here. Okay, Mark, is it really is Mark, is it easy to get the self-employed immigration application? Okay, I'm helping people already with self-employed, and it's not easy. There are things that they don't tell you about what you need to include in those applications. I'm working with clients right now um, with their own self-employed PR application. So, Florence, I recommend that you go over here to our site and book a consult and I can walk through everything. Remember, the fee that you pay for the consult is credited towards your the, the, the fee when you hire us. So although I charge for the consult, it's basically because my time is precious and that's why we charge for the consult. But the consults are super valuable and you always leave with your questions answered and um, we always lay you with other links and, and help and tutor, you know other resources that are available for you within those consults. Okay, continuing on. Wow, this is just so amazing. Uh, You know, for those of you who are just new, who are just tuning in, what is this all about? What's Mark talking about? Today, February the 13th is going to go down in history. And I am not, I'm not trying to overplay this. This is going to go down in history as the largest draw ever. February the 13th, the CRS score, the lowest was 75 and there were over 27,332 candidates who are in Canada who qualified through the Canadian Experience class who were pulled out of the pool, who were given an invitation to apply. And I've said repeatedly, you guys, please, please do not waste this opportunity. This is something that the smallest little mistake, and I'll give you this example, the smallest little mistake you upload And I experienced this personally, okay? You upload a black and white color, a black and white copy of a German police certificate. Your application gets returned and you're sitting at 100 points. You may never get that chance back. And I think that is a fair statement. You may never get that chance back. You will only, only have one shot. You won't get a second chance, like I said, to get your knock code right. 
you will not get a second chance to fix your reference letter because there was something wrong with it. You will not get a second chance when they return your application as being incomplete and you lose your opportunity of immigrating to Canada. That is what this is all about. And that's why I created this step-by-step course. That's why I didn't leave it just as the course that you purchase and you have no guidance. I, I have now set it up as a masterclass where you purchase the course material. The individual videos are freaking awesome. They have so much information in them. But I personally, Mark Holt, the express entry lawyer, jump in for an hour every morning through the two-week period, answering all your questions, all the, the questions that you have. And the beauty of it is the people in the group are all like a family. And Celine can confirm, you know, and all the other candidates who, all the other uh, subscribers that are in it right now, it is so much fun. And why did I create it? Because I truly, truly care. And I want, you know, as, as an immigration lawyer, I want to have the greatest impact on the world. I want to be able to help as many people as possible. And, and that's why I do this. And um, all right, let's continue on. <laughs> okay. All right, let's see what we have next here. Um, okay, Parvinder says, my friend had the file in June 2020, but he updated the file in January 2021. Yeah, so that's not a problem. Uh, we've talked, Krishna, about the FSW draw. He said this repeatedly. Um, Lexi says, when the FSW approved PR applicants, when will they start receiving their PPRs and will be able to land in Canada? It's not going to be at least till the end of this year. I personally, not until the travel restrictions are lifted, not until the pandemic is, is sorted out. So please, please understand that, um, that you're going to need to be patient through no fault of your own, through no fault of immigration. But the government of Canada has restricted the entry of foreign nationals into certain categories. And you right now, unless you're in the United States, there isn't a pathway yet. So you're going to have to be patient. You're going to have to wait as, as hard as that is. And I know it is. And I feel for you. Your dream is still there. It's still well lit. That little candle is still lit. It's, it has not blown out. Not with this massive draw of CECs you are in. So hang in there, Lexi. Okay, Ahmed says, uh, let's get to Ahmed. Uh, is there any chance of the next CEC draw as my score is 408? And if there is a chance, so what is it going to be the possible score? Well, Ahmed, everybody's called out. If there's another CEC draw, I can guarantee that 1,000, 2,000 people are not just going to be piling in in one day. If there's another draw right away, it's entirely possible that it's going to be lower than 408 because there's no candidates in the pool right now. Okay. All right, and this is fine. This is a fair comment. Um, this Facebook user in the Express Entry Law private Facebook group, you guys, I can't see your actual pictures, but that's not fair for people that have worked really hard to get enough points to apply. That is true. You have to understand, though, the government has to make decisions in who they are going to allow in. Any country is sovereign and can make those determinations. If you are not in Canada and the government, when they look at your situation, and there's no doubt you've probably spent so much money trying to retake IELTS tests, increase your score, paying for your educational credential assessments. You've done all of those things. You've done everything in your power. And I do not discount that at all. I can only imagine the sacrifices that you've made to get here. But from the government of Canada's standpoint, when they can't actually bring people in because of the travel restrictions, they have to turn to wherever source they can to meet these big high quotas that they have these levels plans indicated that their goal is 401,000 people this year. The only way they can do it if people can't travel is to focus on the people that are in the country. But they're not ignoring you. They know you're there. They're just physically prevented. And I've had discussions with the politicians. I've had discussions with the ministers, the members of parliament, with the government officials, you know, and this is just a reality. And so it's not, you know, it's not a slight on you or all of you amazing candidates, but do not give up. Make sure your profile is in the pool. For all the reasons that I've indicated, the PNPs now are reeling. They are wondering what the heck is going on. How am I going to fill my 5,500 quota, my 6,500 quota? Every province has numbers in excess of that. How is the province of Alberta? What are they going to do now? I can tell you that they're going to start nominating you guys because everybody else is going to get called out because of this massive, massive draw and they're going to proceed forward with express entry. 
Why would you wait and file a paper-based application that will take 15 months when you can go through express entry? So it is, this may not be fair in the sense that the whole pandemic is not fair, but you still have opportunities. Purchase a subscription to the course, join me, and I will talk about this in more detail. Okay, and you can say it's ridiculous, but it's, that's misguided. You just don't understand. This process is, is not one that's designed to exclude you. Remember, as I've told and I've explained in detail, you, your opportunities are not over. It is entirely possible that now Alberta has to pull out other people. And you remember Alberta was issuing uh, invitations, notifications of interest to people as low as 300. So they're going to have to change things. All of the provinces are going to have to change things because, because basically the federal government has called every possible candidate into um, uh, basically into the express entry fast track outside of the PNP. Even people that have had nominations that are in the queue with a paper-based application, if they get this express entry, I'm going to advise them to continue forward with express entry. If they get approved through express entry and their PNP application is still out there, then that nomination is going to it's going to be wasted. And those provinces are going to feel like, wow, this is crazy, you know? And so we'll see how this all plays out. Okay. Uh, Jalaj says, hey, Mark, how are you? I've applied for a work permit in April for Alberta. Still waiting for that. Any idea when can I expect? Overseas, the government, I just had my meetings with them just earlier, uh, well, just on Friday, really. And we brought this up. And they have no set processing times, only essential services, um, health care, Food processing are being prioritized. And if you there isn't a very good justification on why you coming to Canada right now is justified, um, you're just it's not going to happen. There, those work permits are going to be delayed. And that's the situation you're in. Vinod, thank you. God bless you too. Okay. So what about the March 18th Copers, Rami? You're just going to be waiting. So the March 18th Copers, you are going to be waiting. I hope that you notified IRCC that you still want to travel. You will not lose your opportunity. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, so Lou says, ask a good question. Does that mean there's not, there's, gonna, there's not going to be any draws in the next one to two months? Well, uh, I don't, like, we don't know what this means. We've never seen this before. We've never had so many candidates um, extended an invitation to apply all at the same time. It's massive, right? And if you look at the massive draws and we look at what we've just seen right here, okay? So you've had a draw that's just been issued that is called out, my goodness, it is, it's absolutely crazy to think of how many people, 27,332 people all at once. If you look at the past rounds of invitations, you will see that the highest numbers that they've extended are about 5,000. So how many draws is that? So if they do it staggered every two weeks, and even if they did 5,000, that's 10,000 a month. So essentially in one swoop, one draw, They've basically issued nominations enough for almost three months. And in some cases, it could potentially be seen as almost four months worth of draws. The reason they're larger is because the rounds of invitations um, are designed to catch up to these lofty levels plans of 400,000. So, um, so over the next couple months, it's possible that this may be one swoop and, and they're, they're not going to issue another round of invitations. Clearly, if they've just issued a CEC, they're probably not going to be issuing another CEC in two weeks. There would only be, you know, maybe a thousand people in it. But it could mean that they are going to issue a round of invitations for the federal skilled workers. It's possible. We don't know. So please don't listen to the haters. Don't listen to the people who are just focused on, you know, what, what appears to have been lost. Because this is going to have ripple effects with the PNPs, which may open up opportunities for outlanders who otherwise wouldn't get a nomination, a notification of interest. So another pro tip I want to give you guys, and those who are watching, like I think we fluctuated. We've had up to 200 people watching live, and I know people are coming in and people are dropping off. But those of you who are listening, I, I'm going to ring a bell. Okay? And you need to understand something. With all of this process that we've got going on here, we don't know for sure what the future is going to hold. We don't. But if you do not have a profile in the pool, you will never have an opportunity if another miracle happens. You must make sure that you're in. You must make sure that your information is accurate. 
and you must do everything in your power to continue if you're an outlander fighting to increase your scores. Don't be satisfied, whatever it takes. And if you do that, you're going to give yourself a chance over the other people that just give up and say, I'm going to wait till the dust settles and I'm not going to submit an application. You will be ahead of them. All right. Okay. Let's keep zooming through here. Yep. MK75. It's crazy. It is absolutely crazy. Okay. This Facebook user says my profile is linked to my lawyer and I'm not able to access it on profile. My goodness. You are in my Express Entry Live private Facebook group, <laughs> even though it's 126,000 and you've retained another lawyer to help you. You guys, are you not aware of my collaborative review where you keep control of it? This is, uh, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to address this. I'm going to flip back to my page. When you go here, you go to about us, click on approach. You will see that our approach has you driving the ship forward. You are the one. If I just highlight here, you know, the fees make sense. It's fully cloud-based. You control, and I'm, I'm right here. You control your own application through your immigration portal. You set the pace. You fill out the forms, and then we review them, us immigration lawyers, and we correct them right on the spot with you. And you have direct access to your lawyer through the whole process. But the key is you control your own application. That's the difference with my awesome little firm here, Healthy Immigration Law. We're client-centered, firm-supported, and this whole process is all about just doing it better. So click on the link, join the course. This one I actually have to update because this is for the February 18th one. There's going to be one on the 20, 20, the 22nd. So click on the link and um, and leave your email address and you'll be the first to be notified. Once the card is open and once it's full, my goodness, we have 27,000 people. Once it is full, then you're going to have to wait till the next one opens and the next one and the next one. All right. Okay, let's continue on. You can see here, there's no limit. Like I've been going an hour and a half. This is so crazy. Oh, oh, I forgot my phone call with Shane. Oh, dang it. <laughs> oh my goodness. I have, um, I have a solar company with my brother and my best friend and uh, it's, it's on the side. And I actually, we've got some really cool things that we're doing with solar energy here in Alberta. And um, I forgot I had to call one of my other friends up in Calgary, my good friend Shane Gross, who is also an immigration lawyer, because I had some questions. He does some business law as well. And uh, I forgot I was supposed to call him at 11. Oh, well, hopefully, maybe he's watching this. Maybe he forgives me. <laughs> but but this unfortunately trumps everything else, doesn't it? It trumps everything else. All right. I, I, I just want to keep answering all these questions. And this is the worst thing for Google, right? It's the worst things for YouTube. Because... These live streams, no one wants to sit and watch this forever, right? As a recording. But I don't care. This is how I do things. And if I can sit here and help you and answer questions and give you guidance, then I'm going to do it. So, yes, I'm going to record a short little video after this is done of 10 minutes covering the high points of what's just happened. Record it as a recording and make it easier and more consumable for everyone. Yes, I'm going to do that. But this one is all about helping and answering those who are live. Okay. All right, let's see what we have here. Um, so Facebook user, to end your question there, talk to your lawyer. Hopefully that you've received an ITA and that lawyer will be notified in their portal. Okay, uh, yes, we've got uh, Edgy. The people post March 18th are unable to travel. Um, well, you say everyone is allowed to come to Canada, including international students. That's simply not true. And you're overgeneralizing. There are so many people that can't come right now. So many businesses who need to send um, professionals to Canada because it's not an essential service. They can't travel. There are so many people that are uh, affected by this. If you look at the numbers of people that are coming to Canada and not all international students can, um, it's massive, the dip in people that have come to Canada. So Edgy, I understand your situation, uh, but um, you know, whatever your name is, <laughs> Edgy Aquatic, but you are not the only one that's not able to travel. Okay. All right. Um, Rajat says, uh, hello, sir. My wife uh, is a nursing through experience. Please tell me, sir, eligibility from Canada. I will flip over here to my page. I will then click on book a consult here. And that's where I will direct you to go. And I'll ring the bell, which means that's a specific question. And uh, you need to book a consult so we can sort that one out. Okay. Um, okay. What is the tiebreaker? Um, Asan says here. Okay. Let's go back here. And we'll go back to the rounds of invitations. The tiebreaker right here 
when they issue a round of invitations and they decide how many they want to issue, in this case, it was 27,332. <clears throat> let's say, well, let's go back here and see the, um, let's, go, let's go back actually and look at the previous rounds and it's a better way to describe it. So in the previous rounds, they have, they have chosen, um, if you go down here and you look at these, the candidates drawn, so you look at the, the, the open draws. So basically, they, they decided we're going to bring in 5,000, 5,000, 5,000. So when each of these, when they bring in 5,000 at a score of 468, there's often going to be some people that are 468 that go beyond 5,000. So maybe, um, well, let's go to the actual round of invitations and I'll show you. So the tiebreaker rule means that anyone that had a score of 468 that submitted their application before or at this time, June 4th at 1339 UTC, that person right there and everyone who submitted it before that person who had 468 received an invitation to apply. Everyone that filed their profile after that date and we're not talking about updates. Updates don't change the original date. You're totally fine to update as many times as you want. But every person that submitted their application after this time and had 468 did not receive an invitation to apply. So that's what that means. That's a good question though. Okay. Uh, some people, um, Zenobia, just, yeah, the basic question, you're going to need to go to the CRS criteria and you'll see the impact that it has going from an eight to a nine. The reason that that CLB nine is so important because often it gives you, it gives you extra points for the skill transferability. You could get even up to a hundred more points um, going from an eight to a nine. So that's how important it is. Okay, Renato, hang tight. I'm going to give you a cheer. If you're in Canada, watch, it's coming. When you get it, the moment you get that ITA, click on the link below and subscribe to the course so that we can make sure that you get it done right. Okay, Vera says, so, so it is true. It is, Vera. It's absolutely true. Okay. Um, okay, so uh, Chimney says, I've received my alt score today. I've created my profile just now. My CRS is 454. Do you fancy any chance of CEC draws in the next two months? after such a massive CEC draw, it is possible. It is possible. More likely that it's going to be a little bit of time before they do another one, but it is entirely possible that they, they could do another round of invitations. You're going to get it in. You're in. That's awesome. And now it's just a waiting game. Okay. Okay. Let's see here. <laughs> yes, Jason, it is crazy. They completely emptied the internal pool. Just crazy. <clears throat> All right, zipping through here. Armstrong, hello to you. Next your expectations, uh, Gariala, the, um, you know, I think that they're going to continue with the rounds of invitations because it's 27,000 and not everybody is going to get through. And like I told you guys before, those of you who are jumping on just recently, you've got an officer in their home, their family's there with them. They're, they're kind of cordoned off in this small little area and they, they, they literally are stuck for confidentiality purposes, they have to keep their computer separate. They have to be cordoned off in this little area and they're processing 27,000 applications. They're one of many officers, including there's been up to 90 new officers that have been hired. There's probably going to be more added in who have very little experience who are having to try to navigate this process. And so I see that many of these, like there's going to be a lot of the 27,000 that just don't get through who make mistakes, who get their ITAs, uh, their EAPRs refused because of errors. Maybe they entered the, and this is another factor I want you guys to understand. Just because you're in the pool, some people may have made mistakes. They may have received an invitation to apply, but they actually entered the information in incorrectly into the pool and their ITA never should have been issued and their application is doomed for failure right from the beginning. Some people like that who've entered them improperly and done it wrong are going to get their applications refused. So there is still room. There is still the possibility. And I think personally, there's still the need for them to continue with the rounds of invitations, both outland, inland. This is just to designed to get a big, massive push to compensate for the fact very few came in last year. That's why they've done this right now, early in the year, so that they can push all of them through by the end of the year and help meet those levels planning. Okay. 
Okay, and I've said, Jacob, here, uh, the future uh, for the remaining CEC applicants, there's going to be more draws. The future is still very bright for you. Okay. Um, yeah, and I this Facebook person says, is it possible that the CRS uh, can drop? It is entirely possible. Yep, Veer, it's true. Um, Sanjay says, thank you, Mark, and thanks for your valuable, critical, clear insight. I'll give you a cheer. Thank you, Sanjay. That means a lot to me. Okay, Lewis says, do you think that they'll change the March 18th corporate date to March 18th, 2021 for people who cannot enter Canada and have COP here in hand? It's hard to say. This is really driven by health. It's driven by the virus. In those days, they didn't actually understand how the virus is transmitted. They didn't understand how hard it would be to contain it. So at this stage, I think they're going to be very conservative in who they actually allow into the country. That's why they're putting so much emphasis on those that are here now. Okay, um, let's just see here. Uh, okay, Umair says, I wish I could choose Canada for my studies and not Australia. The biggest regret. Hey, I'm really sorry to hear that. Um, okay, how much does the course cost? It costs $347. So that's how much the course costs. That's access to me. My The three, $347 US because the program is hosted by um, a US uh, provider. But the, 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 the course itself, $347 is what it costs. And that's access to the full course and me for a two-week period, essentially. And, um, and to book a consult, a 25-minute consult with me, it's 25 minutes. So to book a consult with my, my other lawyers, it's $200 for 25 minutes. So you do the math, Nicholas. The course itself is worth every penny, even if I don't ever appear to answer questions. There are so many tools. There's tips. There's resources. There's checklists. And these are not just the regular government checklists. These are my own checklists that you can use to make sure that you've got things properly. And the letters of explanation, I have direct explanations on how to create, how to, how to draft your letters of explanation. And um, just every, every resource, every tip that I could possibly think of, we've built into the course. So go and, and put your email address in. Click on the link below, subscribe, and you'll be notified. Okay. Um, Okay, Arjun, they have not forgotten you. They haven't. It's the travel restrictions like I talked about. That's why you're not, they haven't forgot about you, but they've been blocked by, by Public Health Canada from bringing all of you in. That's why. Okay, good morning, Mark. I submitted my profile a week ago. 457 CEC. Yes, you're getting an ITA. It is so, so OMG. I can't believe, thank you for your big support. I am so, so happy for you. So cool. Um, yep, thank you. This person says, uh, eligibility starts from the date you submitted your profile. You can update any time. Yes. Okay. All right. Muhammad says, hey, what about us who have passed our eligibility criminality? Won't we be processed uh, outland FSW? Not until the travel restrictions are lifted. Not until they're lifted, my friend. Um, okay. This is someone who joined in. <laughs> <laughs> this one, and I can't actually tell who you are. And so he says, so sorry, I couldn't join the Zoom meeting today. That was, he's a member of also of the step-by-step -step course. He says, for all of you guys, I highly recommend purchasing the course. It is worth every penny of it. Why? Because you do not only have access to the most reliable course on the internet, but also you have two weeks of direct access to ask the best. Okay, he's getting a little carried away. There are some wonderful immigration lawyers out there. There are some great immigration consultants. Okay, but that to ask access to ask the best immigration lawyer your specific questions in detail. So yes, it is much more attuned in a way that I could never do here. So how do you access it? Click on the link in the description. And uh, for those of you who are wondering all about this course that people are talking about, it's it's right here. So I'm going to backtrack and I'm going to go back to the main site here. I've got so many links here. Right here is the step by step course. When you click on the link, it'll take you here. When you click on the register now button right here, it will open up this where you can leave your name and email address to reserve your spot. And trust me, um, the next course, you guys that have received ITAs, you have 90 days, you have no time to wait. I was going to wait till April to open this up again, but I realized that there's just no time. We have to do it now. So, uh, so basically with this here, go here. You can learn more about it. Watch the video that I have here. This is an actual video where I'm talking about it. 
and uh, it, it talks about what this course is all about, everything that's included in it, and um, and you know registering who I am. Most of you know who I am now, and then I even have testimonials from pre from um, from the previous uh, subscribers to the Do It Yourself course, which is actually it's it's like my 2021 version is like a hundred times better than, well, it's not a hundred times better, but it's significantly better even as I've evolved because I've learned and all of these individuals, all permanent residents of Canada, those are some testimonials that you can take a look at, but Hey, what, what do you need? Why do I even need a testimonial when I've got someone who's living the course right now? And uh, because he's posting in the express entry law, private Facebook group, you can't see who it is, but Celine is there and um, just, yeah, it's so, so wonderful. Um, it's so much fun. All right. Um, let's see what else we have here. Okay. We've answered a lot of the questions. Uh, okay. This one, Nicholas says I've created my profile, but now, but I don't have French score and letter of reference yet. Can I add it later in April? For example, absolutely Nicholas. And you've done the right thing. You submit your profile. Now, if you're eligible, get it into the pool, then you can go back and update. Remember when you update anything in the profile, you have to go back down and click continue and resubmit your profile again. Don't just think that a little change to your profile the information is good enough. You actually have to go down and resubmit it for that to actually reset into your profile. Okay. Um, okay. Harsh says my score is 448. And my experience is more than one year in CLB7. I'm not getting an update because my lawyer used his email ID. Yep. That's what happens. And that's why my collaborative review model that I've showed you guys, that's why I love it so much. So when you choose, and if you are someone who wants to hire an immigration lawyer, understand, go to my website, Holthy Immigration Law. It's holthylaw.com. You can just click on the link to the consult. And it'll take you to the site. When you go here, you can read about my client-centered, firm-supported model. The collaborative review model is all about you driving the ship. So not having someone else control, but you have control. We represent people in every way. But this is something we've discovered is just so much more effective for you guys. You are the ones that need control. Okay, this one. Uh, Sunith says, I submitted my profile October the 12th in CAC. Will I get it? Another person. Woo! Click on the link below. Subscribe to the course. Get in and let's make sure that you do not lose out on this one in a, in a lifetime opportunity to immigrate to Canada. Um Okay, George says, Mark, the course won't be ready till early April. We would want to submit ASAP. Any chance we can gain access to the material sooner? Thanks. This is the reason, George, that I'm actually, a week from Monday, the course is going to be opened up. So click on the link below, and I've indicated April, but everything has changed with this new draw because of your exact situation. You don't have any time to wait. I will finish with this course, this this group. They're getting my heart and soul, everything. Um, Next week, we're diving deep into all of the documents this week, but then the following Monday, you will be the next group and you will have access to all the resources, the material, and um, and it's just going to be awesome. And I love it. I'm so excited about this new model and it's going to be fantastic. Um, okay, once again, processing times. Yeah, we talked about that. It's a reality. They're going to be even more vicious. You know, when it comes to processing applications, these officers that are in their, like, you know, they're, they're in their homes processing these applications are going to show no mercy. You know, they don't have time to go chase documents from you. If you don't have it right the first time, you're going to lose out on your opportunity. Imagine how devastating. If you're one of those individuals that was able to benefit from this, who received this um, right here, this amazing new express entry surprise draw, they actually received an ITA. They never dreamed it would be possible. They're sitting at 150 points. You cannot afford to screw this up. You can't afford to make a simple mistake. And that's why I've got the course. That's why I help you. And those of you who just want that added security, my whole firm is designed as a traditional law firm. But what I'm doing is I'm giving every opportunity for people who want to hire a lawyer can hire us. My, my firm is lawyers, immigration lawyers, um, Susan and Alicia and myself. I created a consult process so that you could just ask questions if you just have really tricky situations you want to discuss with us. You can book a consult. If you want to, to save time chasing the internet, trying to find answers that you can't find anywhere, 
That's where the course comes in. It saves time. So you're not wasting all of these 90 days and then realize and run out of time that you weren't able to get something that you needed or that you did something improperly. The step-by-step course that's guided by me in my masterclass will help you to navigate that process, okay? And it's, everybody is together. Like Celine can confirm. It's just, it's awesome. It's like a family. Everybody helps one another. It's so, so awesome. All right, let's see what else we got going here. Um, What does this mean for Edith for CIC? Well, IRCC, which is the new name, CIC was Citizenship and Immigration Canada is long gone, but for Immigration, Refugees and Citizenship Canada, this is a way for them to hopefully meet these lofty levels that the government said that they wanted immigration to process. So this is just one step in that process to meet those levels plans. Okay. Um, <laughs> Prasad, it's no glitch, my friend. It is no glitch. Um, yeah. So this Facebook user says they've submitted everything. Is there going to be delays? Well, they're obviously prioritizing people in Canada. If you're Outland, you like any paper-based Outlander or people that are Outland waiting for their applications, you're going to be delayed because of the travel restrictions. Okay? Um, (laughs) Komal, so my score is 436. I submitted my file on January the 11th. So do you think I will get an invitation or not? Congratulations, Komal. You will. And just to, just to explain so that you guys understand this tiebreaker rule, I'm going to go over to the Facebook page. Remember, the round of invitations, if we go back right here to the main round of invitations right here that was issued today, you will see that this tiebreaker rule that says September the 12th only applies to people that have a CRS score of 75. Every single person that has a CRS score of 76 or higher will receive an invitation to apply, okay? That's what we're talking about. So super excited for you, Kamal. Click on the link below in the description and register for this the course and you will become a part of this amazing group um, that's all going through this massive cohort, the February the 13th candidates. Like you guys are gonna be celebrities. This is how cool it is. I am so, so happy. All right, uh, Muhammad says, Wonder, do you know why IRCC is prioritizing the processing of CC applicants as announced on January the 19th? Why other inland applicants are left out? This is economic, my friend. So the reason they're doing it is because it's designed to be processed as quickly and as fast as possible. So they can process an express entry application way faster than a paper-based. The Mississauga and the other visa offices, uh, the processing centers in Canada, there's travel, there's restrictions on social um, there's social distancing restrictions that prevent immigration officer, officers from all going into the to these offices. They have ex, they've outsourced to, to third parties to digitize all of the paper-based applications so that officers can process them in their houses. But the paper-based are not designed to do that. So yes, spousals are a concern. They're a priority. They're working on them. They've told us that. They're the next priority. But when it comes to, to meeting the quota of 401,000, express entry candidates that are in Canada via CEC are the quickest win that they can get. That's why they're doing what they're doing right now. Okay, hopefully, Harsh, there will be um, another CEC draw soon. We'll just have to see. Um, uh, Can a permanent resident apply for spousal sponsorship while being outside Canada? No. If you're physically outside of Canada, you can't sponsor your spouse um, unless you're actually in Canada. Only citizens can do that. Okay, this person here. I received an invitation from the OINP. At 467 last month, what do you think how long the process might take in this corona crisis? Please guide respect. If you have received an invitation to apply, then you're just going to go through express entry. Um, If they have not processed your nomination yet, then go forward. You know, consider both of them. Let the OINP do what it does. Go forward with your your new nomination if you've received one. Excuse me. And um, I don't know whether it's express entry, your OINP. I think it is because you said 467, so probably the human capital priority stream. But for you, pursue both. What will happen is Ontario will notify, they'll be notified once you submit your EAPR that, um, that you no longer are waiting for their nomination. And so they'll actually tell you to withdraw your nomination so they can use it for someone else. So everyone that's outland, 
those human capital priority stream, <clears throat> if you're still in that process, you're probably going to get notified uh, of an invitation to apply without the Ontario nomination. And so, um, well, I guess it's, well, I'm jumping ahead. I'm jumping ahead. I shouldn't say that. Only the ones that are in Canada, not you outlanders. If you receive this, this OINP, absolutely you're going to proceed forward with it. Ugh, I'm talking so quickly here. Absolutely you're going to proceed forward with it. You're not going to decline it in any way. It's only the people that um, receive an ITA um, who, through the CEC in Canada, um, who are now uh, probably going to have two that are going to be able to proceed forward. If you've received an, an invitation to apply and you've submitted your, your EAPR, often the, um, and even before you submit your EAPR sometimes, the Ontario program will say, hey, we notice we can't access your profile anymore because once you get your ITA, your profile is locked and then they'll make you choose what you want to do. But in your situation, we're just not sure what the processing times are. Remember, um, the, this Ontario, they've implemented some pretty stringent social distancing requirements. And so it makes it difficult for even those officers to process applications. Um, okay, lots of repeat questions here. I think we're just about running up to the end. I've gone almost a full two hours here, which is a long, long time for a live here. Um, let's see here. Uh Okay, here's a classic one, Bail Ruth, same thing. I will tell you, click on the link, register for the course, and we can talk about this. Because even if you've already received your ITA um, and you have not submitted your EAPR yet, this is something that I address specifically in the course that we can dive in deeper and you can decide. Because the answer to your question is it depends. And it's not something that it's really more akin to this, uh, but I do cover it in more detail inside. Okay. Let's see, I'm going to answer two more questions and then we're going to wrap it up. And I know you guys have posted tons of questions. It's been an unbelievable live. Um, I've, you know, just super congratulations to all you people out there who received your invitations to apply. Let's zip down here and just see how many people have indicated that they have received their, um, uh, their ITAs. There's just a ton, a ton of people. Uh, this person yet received the NOI. We talk about that. Um, Let's see here what else we have. Okay, Bail Ruth. Yes, I received under CEC today. Give you a celebration. I just want to highlight all the people that did that. Um, okay, this one, Jose, says, I have 479 points, submitted my profile February, but I haven't received an invitation. It comes instantly or takes some time. Jose, I'm going to give you one of these because at 27,000, it's going to take time for it to come through. Click on the link below, subscribe to the to the masterclass, to the step-by-step -step course, and you will be a part of this whole group, making sure that you do not lose out on your, um, your invitation to apply. Now, at 479 points, if you're a CEC, you're in pretty darn good shape. That's a rocket high score. And so congratulations on that. But I'd strongly encourage you, now that you're in, take advantage of this course that I'm offering, and let's make sure everybody gets through together, Okay. Um, yeah, this person can't believe it. <laughs> it's so awesome. Unbelievable. Let's see what else we have here. Um, I'm just trying to zip through the last ones. Uh, let's see here. Lots of people asking about, will there be another, um, you know, asking about whether or not there will be another massive express entry surprise draw, just like we have here. Um, we just don't know. We really just don't know. Um, yeah, and I'm gonna. I'm just gonna. I will post this one. Faisal says here that uh, it's not going to be leaving Canada or any country shortly. You're right about that. You are right. Um, okay, so this one, Rapali says that they applied in October, um, having a score of 380. Am I eligible for that, Rapali? If you are in Canada and you met the requirements of the CEC, then you're going to get one of these. And I'm going to tell you as well. Go down here, click on the link. Get into our, um, leave your email um, and and save your spot for the next course, which is going to launch right after this one is done, which would be on, I keep forgetting my actual calendaring of this. Uh, it will be on, um, do, 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 do. <laughs> now I'm trying to remember when the next one's going to be launching. Um, it'll be, I think, Yes. So when you click on the link, this is something I want to show you guys. When you click on this link and you go here, it says that it'll be opening the end of March or beginning of April. Igor, make sure you change that because that date is literally going to be 
February the 22nd immediately. I'm going to ratchet this up because there's going to be so many people that need this now that can't wait. So watch for this. Put your email in, your name. This is going to change. It's going to be, um, and we'll get this changed right away so that it reads February the 22nd. All right? All right. Because I've got to go through the, the cohort that we have right now, and then I'm just going to massively open it up to all of you. All right. And I'm bouncing all over the place here. Okay, so let's see what if, if we have any others. We've got lots of people that are that are celebrating and that are happy and my you know massive massive uh, shout out to all of you. Okay. Um, let's see here. Uh, yeah, massive draws for FSW. I wish that was the case. Rapali's got thumbs up. Um, big shout out George has got lots of thumbs and hearts and very generous step. Absolutely. Um, let's see what else we have here. So FSW, we'll just have to see. CEC draws, we'll have to see how those play out. Um, uh, I sure hope, Ashraf, that they will relax their rules on family reunification. I know how much you guys are suffering, and I, I my heart goes out for you. Okay, uh, Rahman says, 441, submitted profile in November. Will I get an invitation? What does the tiebreaker mean? We've talked about that. If you are a CEC candidate, and you are 441, you get this and you get this, a big cheer because you will get that ITA. Click on the link and subscribe. Okay, um, <laughs> he already answered. He doesn't know anything can happen. It's absolutely true. It's absolutely true. Um, okay, and this is another one. Do outlanders have more chances? They actually do with the PNPs. That's exactly what I hit on. They really, really do, okay? Uh, Vidi has got CRS 5454 applied in September. Haven't received ITA yet. Congratulations for you. Same thing. Go down and click on the link and subscribe. Okay. Um, let's see what else we have here. Flavia is like, yes. Bruston. <laughs> uh, <Brustin. laughs> I'm going to give Bruston a shout out. So this just goes to show that family is extensive. Look at Bruston's name, Bruston Holthy. This is my nephew who lives he lives in a, a smaller town just outside of Lethbridge. Congratulations for getting in, my friend. <laughs> That's awesome. He is my nephew, and he even posted a comment on here. There you go. You get all kinds. Bruston, fantastic. I'm going to give you one of these. That is so cool. My young nephew who's still in high school. Good for you. There's a go. Some more social proofing. Mark Holthy is a real person who has real family. <laughs> Let's see here. We'll keep zipping through here. I just want to try to hit on everybody that says that they've actually got a nomination and celebrate. I've answered a lot of these questions. They've just been kind of cycling and cycling. Um, okay. Uh, Rincey says, will there be a CC draw? I just got my outs results and entered the pool. I'm so desperate that I just missed this golden opportunity. Rincey, it will be okay for you. I still recommend that you click on the link, subscribe to the course. Let's make sure that we've got everything in place for you um, and that you are prepared for when the next draw comes because it will. 27,000 is not going to fill all of the government's quota. There will be more draws, okay? So don't feel too discouraged, all of you, and especially you outlanders, don't feel too discouraged. Okay, let's see what else we have here. Um, I'm just zipping through this. Okay, here's a good question. Zachar says, when will the next ONP tech draw going to happen? I think it's. I think the PNPs are going to be scrambling, looking to do more draws to pull in new candidates who are not being captured by this big, massive draw because otherwise they're not going to meet their quotas. So I think, I think they, it is going to come. Okay, let's see what else we have here. Um... <laughs> Jeff and you're very welcome. <clears throat> you can see how far behind I am with the um, with the comments. Um, I kind of broke out a little bit into O Canada earlier. And so hope I can sing the national anthem as a Canadian citizen one day. Absolutely. Congratulations for all of you got your ITAs. I'm so jealous of all you guys. You know what? I'm going to end right there. And I think that's Elsa from from uh, from Frozen, isn't it? I can't quite tell your your thing there. One that my daughters absolutely love. So I'm going to wrap it up here, guys, but this is unprecedented. This is historical. Um, 
in the, in the history of express entry and really in the history of immigration in Canada, never have they have extended this opportunity to become a permanent resident to people that are in Canada in the way that they've just done. Never have they done that before. And in fact, never before has the, has the Canadian government ever expected to or, or projected to bring in four, over 400,000 um, new immigrants in, in, in one year. Never. And you guys are all a part of it. You guys are all living it. So those who received your invitations to apply today, who've got them already, a big massive shout out, you know. And if I had a different, if I had like these bursting fireworks, I would have those going. It's Canada, so I'll have the snow coming down <laughs> to celebrate. I'm going to play a little bit of music as I sign off here. This is, and do you know what? Actually, when it comes to music, I'm actually going to play something. I'm going to play this one instead. Because this is absolutely unprecedented. And, um, and it makes me so, so proud. As a Canadian immigration lawyer, I'll, I'll let the snow keep coming down because it makes me so, so proud of my country to know that they truly are, you know, they're, they're focusing on the people that are in Canada who are trapped, who have suffered so much, so much through this pandemic, being forced to be laid off. The post-grad students out there, you guys still have a future. Even if you weren't able to meet that one year with the new open work permit, it's just absolutely unbelievable what they have done. And I am so proud to be Canadian. I'm so proud to be an immigration lawyer. I am so proud to be an express entry lawyer. And I want to let all of you guys know that um, the course, please just give it a shot. I know that every single person that goes through this course is going to set themselves up, um, you know, to have just just an amazing opportunity to get their application accepted, to not run into the same problems that people run into repeatedly when they make little mistakes. Because the consequences of you making a mistake now, especially when you're, you know, when you've received an invitation below 450, the consequences of getting your EAPR, a simple little mistake and getting it returned are astronomical. It could make the difference in you being able to immigrate to Canada or not, let alone that one person or however many that had 75. I would love to know who that person is. Um, it's just amazing. So lots of options for you. Click on the links. I'd love to help you, but I want to wish you all the best. And I'm going to go back and, and just end off here, uh, wishing you just a marvelous, marvelous day. And let's see where this crazy world is going to go. All right. Mark Holthy, Canadian immigration lawyer, coming from Lethbridge, Alberta, Canada, my home. That's where I've been practicing with my firm and lawyers across Alberta. I just want to thank you guys for all tuning in and it's been awesome. All right. Take care.